Hi, this is Lokesh Kumar from Informatica Global Customer Support Team. Today we are going to see how to maintain multiple JVMs on JBoss for MDM 10.3 HF1. Coming to agenda, we are going to talk about the purpose of why we need to maintain the multiple JVMs, and then we have to, we, or we can walk through the steps to be followed on maintaining multiple JVMs. And finally, we are going to look at the additional points to be remembered when we are maintaining multiple JVMs for JBoss. Coming to purpose of maintaining multiple JVMs, these are the primary or precious concepts that we need to walk through on, uh, and decide why we need multiple JVMs exactly. If we take the first one, which is ease of deployment. Ease of deployment is nothing but deploying the code or ER file on one JBoss node and it gets automatically deployed onto other multiple JVM or JBoss instances. This is allowed only in domain mode of JBoss. This is not supported in standalone mode. MDM is only supported on standalone mode, so ease of deployment is, is not needed here. The next one is the load balancing. If we talk about the load balancing, it could be a hub server load balancing or the process server load balancing. For the hub server load balancing, is nothing but the request is a hub server via JBoss to, based on the load. This is again maintained at the JBoss level through the load balancer concept. So using the HTTP, uh, HTTP or HTTPS load balancer at the network level, uh, the load is automatically shared to the hub server. Coming to the process server, process server load balancing is nothing to do with the multiple JVMs. MDM has internal code of uh, or internal algorithm for maintaining load balancing across the multiple process servers. The next one is a high availability or clustering of app server or MDM. So when it comes to clustering, MDM doesn't need the app server to be in cluster. And if app server is clustered, the underlying applications like MDM or any custom code will of course it's also a part of cluster. Coming to the custom code or custom calls. If we want to maintain custom code differently and to track the performance or for a better performance want to maintain it as a different JVM then of course we can think about multiple JVM as well but there is no difference having within the same JVM and the final thing is the active OS clustering or the message queues clustering that we use it for MDM these active OS and message queues clustering can be achieved if we use multiple JVM or if we, do, if we don't want these can be done manually and to you the final thing which is for performance tweak where we need to maintain multiple JVMs one for hub server the other one for process server and the other one for a different JVM and to track it to make sure one JVM or the high usage of one server doesn't affect other, affect the other server then even for that reason we can go to the multiple JVM. So we one have to go through all of this on what needs to be achieved based on that we have to design multiple JVMs. If we if any any of these uh, things which is mentioned here is not needed or uh, go with a different approach say ease of deployment or load balancing or high availability, high availability those doesn't need a multiple JVM at all. So make sure you think right before go, taking this approach. So the next steps to be followed to achieve multiple JVMs within the JBoss, let, let me show you on uh, MDM version 10.3 HF1 of JBoss version 7.1 on my local system. So this is my local system where I have installed JBoss 7.1, which has a standalone uh, mode, which is one JVM by default. In order to follow multiple JVMs, here are the steps. First, think about how many JVMs that are needed. Let's take an example of three JVMs where I want to maintain one JVM for hub server, one JVM for process server, and one JVM for custom code. So, by default, the installer will have one standalone mode. So, in order to maintain two more JVMs, so copy the standalone folder twice and rename them accordingly as standalone one and standalone two.
now go to bin directory copy paste the standalone and standalone.con multiple times in a similar way so that you can have multiple standalone batch files to work with so standalone is copied again so that I have standalone one dot bat and standalone two bat dot bat similar way copy and paste the standalone con and rename them as standalone conf1 dot bat and standalone conf2 dot bat now open the standalone one dot batch file which is a copied one this will be still pointing to the old um, standalone file name so we have to change the name accordingly so search for standalone so there are three places where we have to change it one is the this program name change it to standalone one dot bat the other one is the conf path and finally the jboss home directory and then standalone directory so these are the three places where this needs to be changed one is at the program name the second one is a standalone conf directory name and the third one is for the jboss directory in a similar way modify the uh, file names or the properties within the standalone 2.batch file accordingly let me show you that just for standalone change to standalone 2.bat change to standalone 2.conf.bat and standalone 2 directory now open the standalone .conf one bat which got copied and then we have to use or uh, change it in a change few java layer parameters so where there is ipv4 stack to true copy and paste these properties one is use an offset since we are maintaining multiple jvms on the same jboss instance which is on the same machine make sure the port is different in order to so start with a different port offset we have added a port offset of 100 for the second jvm which is a standalone one and then we have added the path to jboss 7 standalone one directory and then with a different node which is say node 1 so these are the properties that needs to be changed on standalone.conf1 in a similar way there is a standalone conf 2.bat copy paste the same thing by modifying the offset to, to say 200 make sure there is a hundred offset difference between each JVM so the first one offset will have a zero if you don't depend second one will have hundred offset the third one will have 200 offset and then change the node name to node 2 and point the standalone directories to standalone 2 in a correct path And change the standalone configuration as well to standalone to configuration now that all the standalone folder batch files are modified we can start the jboss the normal way is using standalone dot bat the first one for the first jvm the first jvm siphon c and then standalone pull dot xml use a binding 0.0.0, .0. this will start the first jvm and the second jvm standalone one dot bat whatever the modified batch file we are using and then use a standalone full dot xml which is present within the standalone uh, one configuration folder it picks by default so be 0.0.0.0 .0. and then finally start the third one the standalone two dot bat you can see standalone full dot xml then binding 
This will start the third JVM. So each has their own deployments directory and if you install the hub server, the corresponding code goes to the standalone deployments directory, then process server on the second JVM, then it goes to standalone one deployments directory and finally the third one goes under standalone two deployments directory. Here I am using standalone full XML which means that only MDM is clustered, app server is not clustered. If you want to make the app server to be clustered, there are other KBs on Informatica support portal where you can use the standalone full HXML and couple of other properties like offset, node and multicast to make sure all the three JVMs uh, of uh, different JBoss instances are in clustered mode. And finally, the points to remember, like I said, you can follow the similar approach. If you want to have multiple JBoss instances, then you have to perform the same thing on multiple JBoss nodes by copying multiple standalone directories and batch files and configuring it. In case the JBoss instances are on different machines, then the offset can be same because there will not be any port conflict. But in case you have multiple JBoss instances on the same machine, then you have to make sure offset is 100 for each JVM. If you have two JBoss instances, then the offset goes like 100, 200 for different JVMs of JVMs of first JBoss instance and then on the second JBoss instance then it should be 400, 500 and in case if you go with standalone full HXML which is nothing but you want to maintain the app server JBoss to be in cluster then you have to note that there could be an additional overhead for the system to, to sync the cache across multiple JBoss instances for example if you have an EJB clustering then EJB clustering has to be synced across all, all the nodes which could take more time for the JBoss instances to, to come up in such case you have to increase the timeout in case if server doesn't come up and finally maintaining the cluster or you setting up the multiple JVMs on a single JBoss that is covered in this video is nothing to do with the MDM because uh, MDM doesn't need the JBoss to be clustered or MDM doesn't need to maintain multiple JVMs it is it is uh, it is about to the purpose that you are using it or to make sure or to encounter not to encounter performance issues um, then are based on the purpose that you have it found out so that's where you have to come with the come up with the decision that you have to go with multiple JVMs and this is nothing to do with MDM here because it is at the, everything is done at the applica application layer which is JBoss specific so if in case if you have, if you need more information you can also find on the JBoss site as well Yes, we would like to uh, hear from you. Please provide the feedback on support videos at informatica.com or you can uh, subscribe to uh, Twitter. Thank you.